system. <coughs> so, uh, as you can see here, we can remove E and D and F because they can be measured together. D and F can be measured uh, together by removing E from this state table. And I will take an example which is more sophisticated than this. So by start, starting with this state diagram, we end up with only states that have A, B, C, D, and we have eliminated E uh, and F in this case. So E and F has been, uh, or have been eliminated. <coughs> now, the best way to deal with the state reduction is to go implication charts. So instead of doing a trial and error, comparing states, pairwise comparison, just go and do an implication chart. So an implication chart, you start from the table, and you copy this information here. And the first thing you would do is try to determine the ones that there is no way they can be compatible. So that's what we do here. So what, so what we do, not in one step, but it's very simple. I look at, so instead of asking the question, what two states that are compatible, I am determining the states that are not compatible and get rid of them, okay? Rather than asking the positive question, I ask the negative one. Let me get rid of the ones that I cannot combine because then I can deal with the rest. For instance, if you look at A and B, A and B, you can see the outputs are different. So just compare the states with respect to the output and the ones that are different, cross them out. Don't consider them any further, okay? So that's why it's very easy for you to say that A and B, 0 and 1, A and E, A and E, 0, 1, A and F, A and F, 0, 1. So you can very easily at least eliminate the ones that there is no way for us to consider, consider them for um, combination. Okay? Now, how many states we have left? We have 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten comparisons that we have to do. Now, we go and try to ask questions. We have eliminated all these, so now we just have to deal with the ones that are possible. So, when we look at A and C, A and C, we compare them entry by entry. We know that A and C can be said to be compatible if C and G are the same and B and F are the same. And here we have the same thing. So the only conditions, G has to be C and B has to be F. If you look at G and C, so G, C and G, you know, we don't have a cross. So therefore, it's still possible, okay? And B and F, B and F, it's still possible. So we'll have to keep it there. Okay? So now these are the conditional equivalents. These uh, states, can be considered to be equivalent, okay, if we satisfy these conditions. Now, what happened to C and F? Now, C and F is already determined before that it's not possible, are different. So therefore, this answers this question and we have taken care of it. Okay, and then we go to the next step. Okay. <laughs> So we have C and F, we have taken it away, okay? And let us look at B and E. So we just have to repeat the process until we get rid of um, all of them. So uh, the ones that are incompatible. So uh, let us see. B and E, what's happening to B and E? B and E. So B goes to F, E goes to H. B goes to A. E goes to G, okay? And B goes to zero, uh, sorry, uh, the output is zero. And uh, so the outputs are compatible. We just have to make sure that the conditions are satisfied, okay? So by doing the checking again, okay, we will determine that B is not equivalent to F. Why? Because for B to be equivalent to F, G and F has to be satisfied. That's, what, that's not satisfied, so therefore that's not satisfied. And we cross it out. Is that right? And you just have to go through the table again and again until you fix all of them, which will lead us to determine that the possible combinations that we will have are simply 
uh, H can be combined with E, as you can see it here, and uh, G can be combined with D. Okay? So now my system <coughs> has be reduced into this number of states. Now, there are some possibilities that, in many cases, I'm talking about a different example here, by the way, just to, now this is not the same example as the slide before. So let us say we have a system like this, and we can come up with all these possible equivalent states, that is, A and B are equivalent, A and C are equivalent, A and H, and so on. Let us say we determine these possibilities. Now we would like to see if we can merge compatible states together by the merging diagram or the merging graph. <coughs> so we are told that G uh, is equivalent to H and D, A is equivalent to A and B, A is equivalent to A and C, B is not equivalent to C. So we have all these facts. The question is how do we determine or how can we determine the minimum state representation of the system. So as you can see here, G and H, from here, G and H, so this one gives you G and H, H and A, A and B, A and C, H and D, G and D, E and G. So these are the ones that we determine them to be equivalent states from the implication chart. So the way to, uh, to merge them together is to find the maximum cliques. So in this case, if I combine these three together, okay, that will give me one clique. So I can consider D, H, and G to be one state because they are pointing to each other. H points to this and this. G points to this and this and so on. So I consider them to be one state. Then I can consider A and C to be one state, or A and B to be one state, but I cannot combine them, the three of them, together because they don't constitute a clique. And I have E and G to be uh, possible to be one state, but G now is part of this, so E is going to be in its own and so on. So that's why we can merge now the, the group together. So what we are left with, A equivalent to B, and A is equivalent to Z, and we have to choose one of them. So either we take A and C together, or we take A and B together, and one of them is going to be left as a state on its own, okay? So going back, we merge these three together because they constitute a clique. We would have E, and now we would have to deal with A, B, C. A is connected to C, so they can be combined together, and B is a standalone, we can also consider it to be a state on its own in this case. Or if you choose A and B, then A and C should not be combined together because that conflicts A and B being on one state. Now, let us move to a synchronous circuit. Number one, in a synchronous circuit, we have determined that for the circuit to work properly, we are going to uh, assume that it is working in the fundamental mode. That is, only one input is to be changed at a time, and that there is time enough given between input changes so that the circuit gets the time to move to the next state. Like, you cannot just go and change the inputs before giving the, 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 the circuit enough time to move to the next state. So when we move the inputs, we have to wait until the circuit settles, which is a timing that we did not really consider in our system, but that's an assumption. It's like the fundamental mode assumption. So analysis, to analyze a, a synchronous circuit, again, we look at um, the big Y, 